Good morning. Good morning. Um, what a great day we have today. Well, let's see. It's fall. It's fall. Um, you know, in the fall, the colors change. It starts to get a little cooler. Of course, it's still officially September. And it's honestly up here, it's a little cooler than I expected. It's 54 degrees. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to turn the heat on yet, right? It's almost too early for that. It's September, but it is fall and the colors are changing. And right after fall, we head into the holiday season. And of course, the biggest holiday of that season is Christmas. So how does that play into our show today? Today, we are going to talk about the um, about freestanding lace. It's a very popular item this season. Hold on a second. Cindy King, good morning. What are you doing here? Thought you went out of town. It's nice to have you. So as I was saying, we're going to do uh, we're going to talk about freestanding lace and why it works, how it works. Because, you know, freestanding lace has no fabric. The idea is that it is freestanding. It is stitches, um, lots of stitches. But, you know, that once you take away the stabilizer, um, can go anywhere you want. You can put it on a wall, you can put it on a, a window, you can lay it on the uh, table decoration. Um, but why does it work? Why doesn't it just fall apart? You know, it is thread after all, and it's just no fabric. So why doesn't it just fall apart? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about freestanding lace. And let me um, bring up a comment here. Cindy says she's working on her wreath. Her mom loves, loves, loves the beautiful leaf you made. Oh, I'm not out of town. Oh, I am out of town, but wanted to be here for this lesson. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that your mom loved the leaves. Let me tell you how this freestanding lace thing started. Cindy had purchased some stock designs um, and they fell apart. So I helped her rebuild. Um, actually, I just started from scratch. Um, I created for her a freestanding leaf that um, would not fall apart and that she was able to use for a project she's making for her mother. So that's what brought up the thought that I should talk about freestanding lace and how it works. Now, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, what I have on screen is going to be is going to be uh, just a paint software. I use uh, a Windows based computer. So uh, those, you know, you Mac users out there, you probably have something else that you would use. But we're just going to, we're just going to um, do a little hand drawing. And let me say, I am not an artist. I draw, I draw um, a great hand turkey, you know, the the trace, where am I here? Oh, there we are. You know, where you trace around your hand. Do, 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 do. I do a great hand turkey, uh, but I'm not an artist. So we're just going to kind of wing it. Let's see if we can bring this up on screen. Here we go. Now, the thing about freestanding lace, how does it work? Let's see if we can't. make this work. So when your needle, how do we want to do this? When your needle comes over and around. Oh, look at Joe Rita is here. 
Good morning, Joe Rita. So good to see you. So let's do this again. When your needle comes and makes that downward motion to go through your fabric, it's going to pick up, let's see if we can't change colors here, pick up the bobbin thread. And when it comes back up, it doesn't come behind the bobbin thread. It doesn't come behind the bobbin thread. It actually, it actually comes around the bobbin thread. So your stitch is going like this and the bobbin thread is going like this and then your stitch comes up here. So you see the two twist, they twist together and that twist, that twist locks them together. And when we go and make another downward stroke, our bobbin thread again gets caught up with the top thread and it makes another twist. Let me just take a moment to say good morning. Good morning, Jesse. It's good to see you. West Virginia, Cyclone, West Virginia. Cyclone, that could be a dangerous place. Jesse, we're talking about freestanding lace and how it works. So what happens is with every stitch you make, the bobbin thread twists in with the top thread. So if you do your twist right, Gustav's here. Good morning, my friend. Love those puppy pictures. Keep them coming. Gusta has a litter of puppies. What can I say? I like puppies. So that's what happens. Your um, thread makes a twist. And because there's a twist, it won't come apart until you cut the thread, which is something we're not going to do, right? Now... Deanna is here. Good morning, Deanna. We're talking freestanding lace today. So um, when you put down a layer of threads, they're all locked. And then we're going to put down another layer. And then we're going to put down, oops, let me put myself here. We're going to put down layer after layer after layer. Actually, I use a four layer freestanding lace for my basic three standing lace. Now, there are other other um, styles of freestanding lace, um, some that looks like it's been corded, um, but they all use the same principle. No. Oh. Joe Rita's got a comment here. She has a thing about people knowing how the machine works. Find a junk one, tear it all apart. Covers, turn the hand wheel, watch what's going on from the motor to the bobbin. That is actually, I like to do that myself. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're dissecting freestanding lace. And Jesse started embroidery but never did freestanding lace. Well, here you go, Jesse. It's not difficult. It can be fun. Um, the only, besides the machine and the thread, you need um, a water-soluble stabilizer. And the one you should use is a fabric-like stabilizer. Let me see if I can find you. Let me see. Oh, got to get my keyboard out. We're going to go to... Um, the most generic of shopping uh, channels. Here we go. Uh, Amazon, of course. And we're going to look for water. Soluble. Okay. Wash. 
a stabilizer. You know, sometimes you just need to Here we go. Just your standard wash away water soluble embroidery stabilizer. Looks like a fabric. But once you get it um once you get it wet, it just it disappears. What it is is it's uh it's starch. It's just a starch product. Let me get rid of this now. Oh, come on. You know, I'm not the um I'm not the uh, producer that Eric Campbell and Jeff Fuller are. Um, so you need the water soluble stabilizer, you need the thread and you need a machine. Oh, and a digitized um, design file that is made for freestanding lace because remember it's got to interlock otherwise it'll fall apart. Um, the other thing with regard to the thread, a lot of people like to use a matching bobbin thread. Now you can buy colors of um, uh, 60 weight pre-wound bobbins, or you can wind your own. Um, if you're doing if you're doing uh, freestanding lace in just white, you've got you know white's pretty standard bobbin. But here, this is what I want to do today. I want to show you the steps I use, get rid of the keyboard, in creating freestanding lace. Uh, Cindy's right. Um, the, the, <laughs> the stabilizer looks like the no-show mesh. Don't store them together because it's hard to tell them apart. I have done that so many times. Um, went to wash away a uh, uh, freestanding lace file design that I had stitched out. And, you know, it felt kind of, it felt kind of funny and it never rinsed away. That's because I pulled the no-show uh, poly mesh and um, stitched on that. Didn't work. <laughs> okay. So with the holiday season coming up, remember I, I started, um, I started this with the whole, we're heading into Christmas and what can we do for Christmas? Um, well, we're going to make. A freestanding lace ornament. Okay, gonna go to the big screen now. You ready? Here we go. Now this is just an image that I pulled off the internet. I don't have the rights to it. It's just for sample. If I um, if I decide to post this for sale on my uh, my website, I will go over and buy the rights to use it. But today I just wanted to show you a, a sample of freestanding lace. The first thing I do, and I'll try to do each of these colors in a different layer, or excuse me, <laughs> each of these layers in a different color. The first thing I'm going to do is, um, because this ornament is going to have an all freestanding lace should have an outside uh, border. I am going to create a tatami fill. We're going to round this off up here. Then we're going to come straight down. Can you guys see the pointer? Do you want me to put the highlighter on? Then we're going to come back up. Oops. We want this to be a straight line. And there we go. So yeah, I'm going to put the highlighter on. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. There we go. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Now, I use a four-layer technique for my standard freestanding free lace. I start out with my first color. It's a base and it's a full tatami. We're going to change that. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the underlay. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that it runs the stitches on the edges. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. 
I'm going to change my stitch angle to zero for the first layer. Going back to my fill, I am going to change it from a standard 40 density for a dot four millimeter density to four. Oh, look. I think the underlay is still there. Let me, yeah, that's okay. We can go back to that. So, if we go to our underlay, yep, it's still there. We're going to click it off because all we want are the lines. Now, remember I had that edge piece where it, um, changed our edges and I want I want as many stitches as I can get along that edge because remember we have to lock in so put that back it's now squared off our edges and that's our first layer I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to duplicate it I'll change color for you and I'm going to change the stitch angle we were at zero for the first layer now we're going to go to 90. I'm going to blow this up really big for you because what I want you to see is that in here, let's even go further. Let's, where is it? Okay. Gosh, I hope you can see this. In here are little dots. Those are all stitch penetrations. It's going to make a stitch here. Then it's going to come down and make a stitch here. Then it's going to come down and make a stitch here. The idea is that each of these stitches, remember we got a twist there and we've got a twist there, but they're going to layer the thread underneath it They're going to layer the thread underneath it between the two stitches, the two, the upper and the lower thread. So the second layer is going to is going to jump over and under, pinning the first layer between the two threads of the second layer. Cindy wants to know if a motif design found in Wilcom could work, and it could course depending on the depending on the motif you'll want to test it um there's something more that needs to happen with that and i don't think you can make these adjustments with a motif once we get past this i'll tell you i'll show you what i mean now i'm going to make another layer again we're going to duplicate Again, I'll change the color. And this time, let me go back because I need to find my angle. We're going to cross over. We're going to make a fourth layer. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to change the stitch angle. So going back, you know, giant size this, going back in this one area, we've laid our first layer of thread. Our second layer has encapsulated the first layer. Remember, um, going over here, our over under, we've twisted. Now we've twisted a second layer. Our third layer has encapsulated the first two layers, and our fourth layer has encapsulated the um, all four layers. Now, I want one more layer, and I'm going to show you in my in my software. Basically, it's not going to be another layer. Basically, we need to create our um, outside satin border, and I just simply 
create another layer and then change it to a satin stitch. Now this is a three millimeter satin, um, which will work just fine. You can go wider, you can go narrower, that's your choice. But here's the key to this. Let's go to the underlays. Right now it's showing a tatami underlay, which just means it's gonna be kind of jaggedy. It's gonna be a box shape. We want a couple of things. We remember we want to we want to encapsulate all this thread to keep it from falling apart. So we're going to use as much underlay as we can get away with. So in this case, I'm going to use an edge run underlay so we can pull it through our edges. In fact, let me go back really big again. And I don't know if you can see this. This right here is part of the edge run underlay of our um, of our satin. And you can see it's it's going to catch some of these threads, but not enough. We want more. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to add a second underlay. And I'm going to add a double zigzag. You see that? Zigzags. Plus the edge run. And that's good, but still not enough. I want more. So how do I get more stitches in there? I don't have any more room for underlay. How do I get more stitches? I increase my density to get more stitches so that I have more locking. So here's our base. This is our base for our design for our Christmas tree. One other thing we're going to need up here at the very top, we're going to need some way to hook that ornament to the, um, to the tree. So what do we do for that? Well, I create a satin circle right and again remember it's got to interlock so i'm going to change the density down to match the density of my uh, satin border i'm going to change the underlays to match remember we had a double zigzag and an edge run and then I'm going to place this circle right here. Barb. Good morning, Barb. So I'm going to place the circle right here, but that's not its final destination. I don't want that, I don't want that circle to fall out. So I'm actually going to move it to be in between in the middle of my four layers so that when it stitches it gets first it's going to do my first two layers then we'll do the circle and then the next two layers and our satin border that way this circle is completely locked in now if you look here you can see some of your circle. We don't want that to distract. So let's see if we can't do something with that. Of course, let's see now. We have, and Yeah, just a little editing. There we go. That's our hanger. Okay. So this is our base for our Christmas tree. 
Where am I? There we are. This is our base for our Christmas tree. Okay, so that's done. Now we need to decorate our Christmas tree. So what are we going to do? We're going to hide these stitches. And we're going to bring back our artwork. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that all of this is going to be too open and and is not going to give us a locking effect that we want. So I'm going to use a, um, what is it called? A French knot design file that is found in Wilcom, but can be made manually. And if you'd like, I can, um, I can get, I can do a short video on how to do that. And remember when we're doing freestanding lace, we want as many locking stitches as we can get. So in this case, we're going to increase the density. Right? Lots of blocking stitches. All of these locking stitches. <laughs> Cindy has a point. She would go crazy doing all the bobbin changes for, um, for this design file, which is why um, I would probably just go with one or two color changes. Maybe one for the green of the tree and then maybe one um, for all the, the circle ornaments. And then maybe a third, oh, excuse me, a third one, a third one for the striping. But we have lots of stitches here. Do we have any underlay to choose from? We do. Let's do a double tatami. Of course, it's probably too small and it's probably not going to show. Let's bring back our tree. I'm going to reduce this a little bit. And basically, because I have this one here, I'm just going to do a copy and paste and resize. I know that the density I have is good. I like that density. So again, I'm just going to copy and paste. And don't um, remember, you're the digitizer here. Uh, you don't have to use all of the elements in this particular picture. We can, you know, pick and choose. Here, we need we need one here though. They can be smaller. All right, let's go over here, just a little bit smaller. And we're just copy and pasting. I would use just a satin dot, but again, we want to make sure we have as many stitches as possible to lock into our previous stitches, which is why I chose this French knot element versus a satin circle. Now, as you can see, I'm just kind of picking and choosing which ones I want to use because of their sizing. All right. Just pick and choose. Oops, that was probably too big for where I put it. Yes, it is, Cindy. Cindy said that um, that this is where testing and knowledge of making freestanding lace comes into play. And you're right. You have to understand the concept. Let me bring myself back here. 
you have to understand the concept that when your thread goes down, it's picking up the bobbin thread and making a knot. And then it's coming apart and doing the same thing. Hey, that was actually pretty decent. And then when you turn the uh, turn the angle, it does the same thing in a different angle. So you're tying in, you're twisting up all of this thread together. One thing you want to be careful though is that you don't you don't make the the density of the stitches how close they are together so tight that it it doesn't look like lace it looks like um you know a loose woven fabric we want lace to look like lace which is why i use a number four setting versus um versus anything tighter versus anything smaller okay so let's hide our image and bring back our tree i want to change the colors of our tree we don't need five colors for the tree we're just going to do a green tree now if you look here some of these are outside um, onto our satin border. We're just going to tuck them back in. All right. So those are the, um, those are a little Christmas ornament. Oh my goodness. I didn't show you that. Did I? Those are our little Christmas ornament, uh, Christmas round, you know, Christmas ornaments. I'm babbling now. These two were actually outside, outside, um, so I just tucked them back in. Thank you, Cindy. I like freestanding lace that you can see through. I like freestanding lace to look like lace. Yes, we have to have enough thread there to hold the elements that we place on top, but I still like to be able to see through it. It gives it a nice light airy look. Oh, this one needs to move just a little bit more. Okay, so we're good with this. We're going to hide our tree again. And then we're going to bring back our image. And now we're going to do our swirls. We're going to do all of our swirls in just one color. I'm going to use um, this blue color because it shows really well. I am going to start at the bottom. And I don't know that we're going to get this whole thing done. We might. Depends on how long you guys want to stick around with me. And we're going to make our first swirl. Now, after I get this element done, who can tell me exactly what I'm going to do to make it stay? with our lace. How are we going to make this? How are we going to make this swirl lock in? Any thoughts? While you're thinking on that, let me just make this other swirl. Swirling, making a swirl. Oh, I got to turn my satin on. Okay, and I actually want that swirl to be under this swirl so that this end hides. I actually want to take this end and tuck it in a little bit differently. So, oh, thank you, Cindy. I have set the stage for a good idea on how to get started. Thank you. So what do I do with these swirls? I'll highlight them both. I will change the density. 
not so tight that it's like um, a 3D foam density, but enough. Then I'm going to go back to the underlay. I'm going to use an edge run underlay and a double zigzag. So that it ties in to all the other stitching. All right. And we do that for all the swirls. We do our swirls. Make sure you're pathing. You know, you don't want to do the swirls down here and then jump up here and do a swirl and then come back down here. Watch your pathing. Gusta, you go take care of those puppies. Have a good night. We'll see you online next time. So you want to make sure about your pathing. So, um, and you can use travel stitches. So from here, I'll stitch this one first and then this one. Then I want to come over here and pick up these little bits. I can use a travel stitch, which is just a single run stitch to get us into the area of where we want to be next. So we can make our next swirl and then our next swirl. So don't forget your pathing. Let's go ahead. Cindy, you want a part two for next week? I tell you what, we will we will do a part two. I'll save it from here. And then um, we'll stitch it. How does that sound? I'll set the I'll set the camera up at the machine and we'll actually stitch it and we'll stitch it slow so you can see it all right okay so with that being said why don't we end it today we'll say goodbye for today and we'll pick it up next week oh i guess it'd be nice if i actually looked at you when I said goodbye. So as I was just saying, let, um, oh gosh. Sydney wants to make sure we have time for this and Jesse is all for it. So we'll do this again next week. Okay. So like I was saying, we will, we will finish our tree next week and then we'll stitch it and because of time because of time i will actually um finish it but i'll save it where we are and i'll make a finished copy i will stitch a full copy and then um so we can go to the machine and we'll stitch but we won't finish stitching and then we'll rinse <laughs> i know I got this whole thing going in my head. Okay, so you guys all have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Part two, freestanding lace. I'm going to get out of here as soon as I can find out where I am. You all have a great week. Bye. Wasn't that fun? Do you have more questions? Do you want to learn something new? Join me at quicktostitch.com for coffee and conversation. And we'll talk about it. Embroidery machines, designs, and business. Hope to see you soon. Bye now. Bye now.